to my speech in this edition of Algeria 2.0 events, which will be about technologies of mobile development. So, I am a Zian Daho software engineering student. I work as a freelancer in mobile native development, both Android and iOS. I also share content about freelancing and computer science technologies in social media if you want to check my account. So, our objectives from this speech are knowing how the mobile application works, understand the principles of creating a great mobile application, understand the role of the mobile developer, knowing the types of technologies in developing mobile application, the differences between each type, and the best technology for your own startup. <coughs> so, first of all, how the mobile application actually works. So, your application package file contains all the content of your Android or iOS app and is the file that the OS-powered devices use to install the app. Each app lives in its own security sandbox, protected by the following security features. The operating system is a multi-user Linux system in which each app is a different user. By default, the system assigns each app a unique Linux user ID. The ID is used only by the system and it's unknown to the app. The system sets permissions for other files in an app so that only the user ID assigned to that app can access them. Each process has its own virtual machine. So an app code runs in isolation from other apps. By default, every app runs in its own Linux process. The operating system starts the process when any of the app's components needs to be executed and then shuts down the process when it's no longer needed or when the system must recover memory from other apps. The system implements also the principle of least privilege, that is, each app by default has access only to the components that it requires to do its work and no more. This creates a very secure environment in which an app cannot access parts of the system for which it's not given permission. How to be uh, or how to create a professional application? So, your app needs to be functional, it does what the user waits from. The user interface and the user experience are so important, since they are the most noticeable thing by the user. Your app needs to be fast in terms of performance, no bugs, no long waiting time, and don't forget the aspect of security in your application. Finally, write your code application in specific design patterns and architectures. Add meaningful comments to easily maintain your app. Now, how to be a professional developer. So, firstly, you need to be a professional problem solver. Therefore, I always emphasize the need to learn algorithms. Regardless of the language used in it, it's still a tool because the basics of a program development is by dividing it to small problems. And every problem you find a solution to through a specific algorithm. And the programming language here is a tool for translating your solution into reality. Secondly, you need to be a professional UI developer. The interface is the most important thing for the user and the most thing that he notes and evaluates your app on it. So you must be able to fully develop the interface in exact copy of the design provided by the UI designer. Pay attention to the details, you may change 5 SP of your font size only to give you an impressive result in the interface. Next, you need to be a pro debugger. Following up your program through debug is one of the most important stages of your software development by tracking the causes of your bugs, which are two types, a malfunction that causes the program to stop and a malfunction that does not cause the, pro the program to stop but rather gives you an expected result or you were not waiting for. And to solve these faults, you must learn how debug file by tracking the causes that led to this malfunction and resolving them with the next step.
which is pro searcher you are not a storage device and you cannot save all the function in the language that you use so a good search is the key to get out of all your problems that you face while developing a specific program and also helps you add whatever services and tools you want to facilitate the translation of the solution that you have reached through your own algorithm finally you need to be pro user which means that you need to be a professional tester so you need to put yourself in the place of the user who does not know how to use your application or your solution like you know so try to try all the possible cases through manual or automatic test of all types either unit test or automatic or functional test so the different technologies of developing a mobile application are native development hybrid apps and cross-platform apps first let's start with native development a native app or native application is a software application built in a specific programming language for the specific device platform either ios or android using what is called a native to the operating system language android native apps are written in java or kotlin with xml and you need to use your the gradle file ios native are written with either Swift or Objective-C uh, and creating the user interface by either storyboards or coding the full interface with Swift UI. Unlike web apps that are written primarily in JavaScript, native apps are applications written in languages that the platform they are being built for accepts. Apple and Google offer app developers their own development tools, interface elements and standardized SDK, Xcode and Android Studio. These tools allow any professional developer to develop a native mobile app relatively easily. Some of famous native apps you can find Uber, Spotify, Pinterest, Coursera, Trello. Now cross platforms. Many people mix between hybrid and cross-platform and think it's the same thing, but it's not because the only similarity is from one code that you can run the application on both platforms, Android and iOS. And in terms of performance, it depends on the type of framework you are using, but it provides a user experience close to native apps. Easy implementation, you can say that it is better than hybrid, but the native remains the king in terms of per performance. Sorry. So, uh, as you can see, according to the 2019 Stack Overflow Developer Survey, Xamarin, React Native, Flutter, and Cordova were the most popular cross platform framework used by professional developers. But Microsoft lately announced that in the next November, Xamarin will be replaced by Mayo, multi-application user interface, which is a platform, which is a framework that allows developers to create uh, cross-platform apps. So, uh, as the other companies not wanting to be left out of the fight. In 2015, Facebook launched an open source project of their own called React Native, which lets you build real native iOS and Android apps with one code base. It's not a mobile web app or an HTML5 app or a hybrid app. With React Native, you can build a real native mobile app that's indistinguishable from an app built using Objective-C or Swift or Java. The framework is based on React, a JavaScript library for building highly responsive user interfaces with React Native. You can create mobile applications that charge up to 80% of their code base and can access certain native features like the accelerometer and smartphone camera, although you might need separate code for iOS and Android for that. Let's move to Flutter. 
Flutter is Google's UI toolkit that allows developers to create natively compiled applications for mobile devices, web browsers, and desktop applications using the same code base. Flutter is based on Dart, a relatively new programming language that shares many features with Swift and Kotlin and can be transformed into JavaScript code. With Flutter, you can design applications that render fast and adapt to platform-specific UX logic. The framework is most suitable for model view presenter pattern development. Here you can find some famous uh, React Native apps, Facebook, Instagram, Bloomberg, and Discord. And Flutter you can find Alibaba, Google AdSense, Reflectly, Tencent, and FlyDirect. Let's move to the final technology, which is hybrid apps. Although mobile apps are designed for smartphone and tablet, it's the backend layer that handles their business logic. Since both iOS and Android SDKs features advanced web components, it's possible also to create parts of an application graphical user interface, GUI, with web uh, programming language, like CSS, JavaScript, or HTML5. Next, developers wrap the code in WebView, a browser bundled inside of a mobile app which renders the content as good old apps website. Some hybrid apps even interact with the smartphone's hardware, although the functionality can be limited. The most promising hybrid app development frameworks on the market right now are AppAge Cordova, formerly known as PhoneGap, and Ionic. You install it like a native app normally, but it's actually a web app in the inside. Hybrid apps like web apps are built with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and run in something called WebView, a simplified browser within your own app. Now, after talking about uh, the, difference, the different type of technologies, native, hybrid, and cross-platforms, and which programming language you use in each one of them, now let's pass to the differences of each one and how you can choose your technology to build your app. So native versus cross platforms and hybrid uh, application is an age old debate. It's a debate that has kept the tech community divided for years. Many people claim to have found the ultimate answer, but both cross platform and native app development technologies are in constant state of evolution. And due to this changing nature of technologies, it serves to revisit these topics from time to time to find out which of these options is currently in the lead. Both native and cross-platform apps have a dynamic list of good and bad sides. These factors can affect everyone involved with the app, including the app owner, the app users, and the app developers. Now, app developers have preferences based on the technology they are most comfortable with. So, let's start, about, uh, let's start with the differences. In terms of performance, native apps do not have any limit in terms of performance or speed because it allows you to go deep into the system and hardware such as USB input, complex networking, memory management, microphone, offline access, and more. Feasibility. Native app development takes twice as much time as cross-platform apps. The cost is also higher since it usually requires building more than one app. Maintenance is equally time-consuming and costly as the developers have to identify bugs and problems for each platform and create different updates accordingly. Cross-platform apps are relatively cheaper in terms of uh, development and maintenance. You are investing in a single app, and that's obvious, and that's all you will have to maintain. However, sometimes the higher number of issues and bugs to maintain is outweighed, uh, uh, outweigh this advantage. Uh, now let's pass to the budget. In terms of budget, if you are on a specific project, the budget that you will present for the development of this application 
is very important here. If you have a large budget, it's better to develop native application. If your budget is limited, now it's better to start with hybrid or cross platforms to, pub to publish your application to the market first and then change or migrate to native after making your profit. Because in terms of maintenance, update and application size, it will be complex and difficult for cross or hybrid application. And in terms of the time you set to get to the market, if you are in a hurry to get your product to market, then your only choice is cross-platform apps. Now in terms of interface and user experience. This depends first on the design, but if we compare the capabilities that you have in the three types of uh, cross-platform is much better than hybrid. But native is still the king here. The importance of user experience is increasing by the minute, which is why it is the most essential thing that you must ensure in your app. Considering what we see, what we saw above, this one really is no-brainer, with better performance, higher speed, and better device utilization. Native apps offer a third tremendous experience. Designers and developers have more creative freedom to create good-looking apps and smooth functional functioning apps. Native apps are not just responsive but also intuitive. While developers can create equally intuitive cross-platform apps, such features often come at the cost of speed, it's difficult for the developers and designers to simultaneously fulfill the UX requirements of multiple platforms. Overall, cross-platform apps do not deliver a desirable user experience. But at this point, the native remains better, because as I mentioned, you have no limits in programming and cross-platforms are basically based on native code. Now, what about the updates synchronization? In a world where mobile apps get up to four updates every month, maintenance costs can consume a large amount of app revenue. And that's where cross-platform apps work away the clear winner. Before we finish, I will answer a question. Can I learn React Native or Flutter without the need of native code? I think there is, this is the most, mis, uh, the most mistake that a mobile developer can make. In fact, if you want to make large app or uh, complex apps, that depend on native features a lot, or it even had a complex UI. In fact, it's the opposite in this case. It's a loss because you just don't have to write the code not twice but triple, one for iOS and one for Android, and at least one for Dart or GS for React Native, uh, using what we call bridging interface, connecting native code with cross-platform framework language like Dart in Flutter or GS in React Native, and of course, lack of performance because that's bridging. Let's take an example. Facebook only marketplace are coded with React Native, and the rest are native. Google also is using Flutter only in display data apps like Google AdSense. So, simply what defines the type of technology the app develop uh, with is the budget, the feature updates are mandatory or not, the major application complexity, need to use native functionalities or not, the capabilities and the competence of the developer team you work with if you uh, work in the team. So, to conclude, the native apps seem far superior in terms of performance and user experience. This is enough to make them the winner. However, let's not forget the choice truly depends on your application. Simple applications like games and content distribution apps are usually developed as a cross-platform app, while apps with specific features are native. Cross-platform is also preferred for business-to-business -business app, where deployment time is the most important thing. Many small businesses also opt for cross-platform due to their limited budget. However, compromising performance and user experience for the sake of saving is often counterproductive. It's important for you to choose a platform that meets your needs, requirement, as well as your target audience, needs to create your winning app.
And finally, all languages and technologies are only tools to do our ask jobs. So don't be fan of a technology because technology is mortal, but good logic and clean algorithm is permanent. Thank you for listening. I hope that you now have a clear idea about the different technologies and what will you choose for your own career. Thanks for Algeria 2.0 for this invitation. Take care of yourself and goodbye.